ஃபார்ம் த்ரீ சிவிக் எடுக்கேஷன் ஃபஸ்ட் டேம் அக்கார்டிங் டு யுவர் சிலபஸ் த செகண்ட் சாப்டர் இஸ் டெமோக்ராட்டிக் சொசைட்டி ஃப்ரம் பேஜ் நம்பர் தேர்ட்டி டூ டு ஃபிஃப்டி டெமோக்ரஸி இஸ் அ ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் அட்மினிஸ்ட்ரேஷன் ஆஸ் வெல் ஆஸ் அ வே ஆஃப் லிவிங் அ டெமோக்ராட்டிக் சொசைட்டி இஸ் அ செல்ஃப் டிசிப்ளினரி and consensual society in which people act in cooperation with one another based on freedom and equality and being respectful to the opinions of the majority to ensure the existence of such a society it is quite essential to develop democratic qualities in the citizens it is expected from this chapter to establish the required competencies in students by building up qualities that are needed for a democratic way of life giving an understanding about the rights and the duties of a child explaining the importance of managing emotions positively explaining the need for leadership emphasizing the importance of improving leadership qualities as well raising awareness about the way they should behave as a followers to live as members of the society family and the school first we will look at the democratic features of a family family is the smallest basic and important unit that can be seen in any society children family can be classified into two as the nuclear family and the extended family what about your family is it a nuclear family or extended family do you all know what is the difference between nuclear family and extended family okay nuclear family having mother father and the children but in the extended family father mother children grandparents uncles and aunts all are living together now tell me which type of a family is your one okay your family can be a nuclear family or even a extended family however if you ask the elders in your family such as your mother father grandmother and grandfather it would be clear that they had spent their childhood in an extended family but at present you can see plenty of nuclear families around you am i correct Yes each and every member of the family has duties and responsibilities to fulfill towards the others so here in this diagram i have given some of the features that should be there in a family first one is receiving sufficient protection and love Another feature of a family is decisions followed by discussions. What is mean by that? Yes, when you all are coming to a decision, you are discussing with all your family members. Next one is solving problems peacefully. When there is a problem arose in the family, all the members are involving in resolving that matter then working cooperatively when there is a work in the family we are working cooperatively together we are working then securing equality all the members are equally treating by the other family members listening to the others opinions that is a must in a family need to listen to the elders need to listen to the parents 
and need to listen to your sisters and brothers these things should be there in a family respecting the elders enjoying the rights while fulfilling duties are some of the democratic features that can be seen in a family let me explain this further children obtain democratic experience from the family democratic qualities such as recognition of leadership qualities listening to others and respecting their ideas and working collectively can be learned by being a member of the family affection love kindness compassion protection and nutrition will determine the well-being of both children and the society they live fulfillment of the duties and responsibilities from parents to children and its vice versa will be beneficial to all taking decisions after discussions among family members at general occasions will be quite helpful for the unity harmony and the betterment of the family for an example selection and preparation of meals performing household chores keeping house clean entertainment enjoying leisure planning educational activities can be done by talking together with family members it is more effective to discuss together and take decisions even at special locations of the family in family affairs tolerating the views of others lead to honor others tolerating the views of others lead to honor the views of the majority and also unity and cordiality in the family is improved by respecting the views of the majority and also children liberal and peaceful environment in the family helps you improve your talents and skills treating parents and elders as leaders seeking their advice and guidance helping the family affairs and working collectively are some of the responsibilities of the children while enjoying freedom such a behavior will assure the family progress as well as the progress of the society democratic features that can be seen in school all of you know that the school is the closest institution next to your home from your childhood to adolescence you lead a life as a student all of you get the opportunity of improving your skills and capabilities by making use of the freedom resources and opportunities available in the school this will enable you to achieve objectives of life successfully each and every one of you should try to achieve objectives in life which are more useful to yourself and to the society there are many specific features that can be seen in a school in a democratic society such as taking correct decisions through discussion being compromised on will of the majority respecting the leadership working in collaboration receiving facilities equally accepting both victory and defeat and resolving problems peacefully holding positions accepting and protecting common traditions rules and regulations the school which consists of children from different social environments provides equal opportunities for education for all of them the school also provides security and opportunities to develop various competencies of you 
disciplinary rules within the school are common to all of you textbooks uniforms midday meals these are provided to all equally the school also provides you the opportunity to engage in co-curricular activities as well as extracurricular activities in order to develop your various competencies the most valuable asset of the parents is their children and they are the future resource of a country so it is a responsibility of both the government and the adults to provide proper nutrition to children and to protect them provide suitable education prepare the background for physical and mental growth guide and assist them to be a person with good personality according to the united nations convention on child rights every human being below 18 years is considered as a child and also the rights entitled to all children irrespective of their gender are recognized as child rights so children these child rights can be listed under four themes tell me what are those four yes right to protection right to participation right to development and right to exist say it again right to protection right to participation right to development and right to exist are the four themes of child rights united nation convention on child rights consist of a preamble and 54 articles every member of the country is bound to protect and follow it the united nations international children's emergency fund which is called as unicef function as an organization established to protect child rights so while you all enjoying your child rights you all also having a duty to fulfill in the other slide i will explain you the duties of you okay my dear children look at this table here i have given you the rights of you as well as the duty of you the first one is right to education so when there is a right for education there is obligation or duty that need to be fulfilled by you that is you should engage in in educational activities in a proper way and also you need to respect parents and teachers and need to protect the discipline rules and regulations of the school are some of the duties that you need to fulfill when you are getting the right to education the second one is right to health facilities then there is a duty for you to be aware of personal hygiene then following good health habits and also raising awareness among other people on good health habits right for freedom to hold a religious belief the duties of you is religious well being respecting the religious beliefs of the other people then right to participate in activities of societies and associations developing one's capabilities is a duty as well contribution to social progress is a duty that needs to be fulfilled by you right to the benefits of social security the duty of you is you should contribute to the social security raising awareness among other people about 
social security so these are some of the rights and obligations of children institutions that safeguard child rights why do we need institutions to safeguard child rights children yes we often hear through media about various problems children face in the present society some of those problems are getting them involving in various abusive activities harassments sexual abuse and also child labor so to inform these type of bad activities which are happening to a child there should be certain authorities or certain institutions so there are three main institutions which are there to fulfill this task first one is national child protection authority national child protection authority the second one is department of probation and child care services third institution is children and women's bureau which is there in sri lankan police so these institutions are there for the protection of child rights and save the children and also they are providing necessary support and guidance to them in this table i have given you some of the government officers who are providing services to children and families at regional level first position is child rights promotion officer services provided by him is provide all the services related to child rights and coordinating facilities the second position is regional child protection officer the service rendered by him is inquire into problems concerning the protection of children and provide necessary support the third position is early childhood development officer the service rendered by him is provide facilities relevant to preschool education and other early childhood services the fourth position is informal and formal education officer the service rendered by him is provide facilities to non schooling children and children with special needs let's talk about various emotions your face is the best mirror which reflects your thoughts feelings and emotions good emotions are delightful for oneself as well as for the society however if unfavorable emotions are not properly manipulated they will cause harm not only to you but to the society as well for an example a person who acts with anger may tend to scold others assault them destroy property and even can cause harm to their lives we can hear from everyday news various incidents resulted by failing to control emotions here i have given four types of emotions and the reactions that comes out during those emotions happiness the reactions are laughing dancing cheering shedding happy tears and jumping when we feel sorrow sometimes we are crying withered face redness of eyes can be seen then when we get anger yes we are scolding assaulting tongue twisting trembling of limbs 
are the actions which comes out from us. When we are in fear, we are screaming, our eyes will get wide, running and stammering. So, these are the four kinds of emotions that a person will undergo with happiness, sorrow, anger and fear. In a democratic society, all citizens should receive equal opportunities. But inequality exists due to different reasons. Various emotions emerge according to the nature of the experiences we encounter. The responses in such situations should be proper and suitable. We should practice ourselves to identify, control, express in a proper way the feelings or emotions that come to our minds in various occasions in our daily life. So, my dear children, tell me what are the measures that can be taken to neutralize unfavorable emotions? Yes, we can engage in exercises to calm the mind. What are the exercises that can we do to calm the mind? Yes, very good. Meditation, growing plants. Enjoying the environment, keeping pets are some of the exercises that can be do to calm the mind. The second way of controlling emotion positively is association of friends. So when we associate with friends, we can discuss about the matter. Mutual support is there. So, we can engage in various activities. We can go on picnics. So, by doing so, we can control our emotions positively. Then, another way of controlling emotion positively is changing personal and environmental conditions causing unfavorable emotions. So, we can keep home and office clean in an orderly manner, minimizing inequalities and differences, keeping the environment beautiful. Such type of activities we can do to keep our emotions in a positive way. Then involvement in creative activities like performing dramas, landscaping, singing, dancing, painting, these types of creative activities are there which we can control our emotions positively. The last one is engaging in sports and physical exercises like walking, swimming, engaging in indoor and outdoor sports like that. So, if we can manage our emotion positively, we are not becoming a victim of emotion. Automatically generates in your features like easygoing characteristics, become a person who does not hurt others' feelings, you will act cooperatively and peacefully with others, become subjected to the trust and the respect of others are some of the benefits one can achieve by controlling emotions positively. Another area we need to discuss in this lesson is leadership. Tell me, why do we need leaders? Yes, Whenever we act collectively, there should be a leader to direct us. So, there are so many definitions given on leadership. One I have given here. Leadership is the ability 
to persuade others, make them dedicated, and encourage them to achieve the objectives of an institution or an organization. That means children to lead the several people or a group of people, there should be a leader to achieve the objectives of them. Uh, the places where we can see the leadership is within the family. Okay. Who are the leaders that can we see in our families? Yes. Parents and adult children are the leaders of a family. Next place is school. Who are the leaders that can be seen in a school? Principal, vice principals, assistant principals, sectional head, teachers, then prefects are the leaders that can be found in a school. Then who are the leaders in the society? Yes, very good. Religious leaders, community leaders, political leaders are there in a society. Then there should be qualities that need to be developed by a leader. The first quality that need to be there with leader is communicational skills. Second one is problem solving skill. Leaders should understand the problem, collecting information, analyzing them and also need to find the solution. Then manipulative skills. Leaders should decide the target, organizing the team to achieve that target, controlling and also reaching the targets next one is organizational skills deciding the objective planning organizing decision making should be done by a leader human relationship sociability attraction ability to keep into relationships maintaining relationships are the qualities that should be there with the leader. Effectivity. Leader should be friendly with the people. Sensibility should be there with the leader. Cheerfulness. So these are some of the qualities that need to be followed by a good leader. Let us identify various leadership styles in the society. According to the nature and the activities of the persons who provide leadership to the society, leadership styles differ. When we have a look at the leaders of a family, an institution, an organization or of a country, analytically many differences can be identified. You have to attempt to become a democratic leader and to establish a democratic society. So my dear children, there are four main leadership styles you all need to learn in this lesson. The four leadership styles are autocratic leadership style, corrupted leadership style, nominal leadership style and democratic leadership style. Okay, tell me what are the features of autocratic leadership style? Yes, these type of leaders are refusing to change. They are act very strictly and also obstruct to develop the capabilities of the followers. The second type of leadership is Corrupted leadership style. So, the corrupted leaders, they are engaging in fraud, corruption and theft. And they are displaying 
wrong behavior and they are disregard the law rules regulation customs and traditions the other leadership style is nominal leadership style they are just there for the name say not working for upliftment of the society not having the good leadership qualities not doing any changes he is like a silent person then the last leadership style is democratic leadership style this type of a leader is accepting and respecting the public opinions and also this type of a leader is maintaining close relationship with the public then encouraging the public and cheer them up listening and solving the conflicts of his followers so tell me which kind of leadership style is the best children yes democratic leadership style is the best one who looks and who see for the necessities of the people as well as who develops uh, the institutions okay tell me why does society need a lead yes leadership is essential to direct a particular society for the fulfillment of its expectations aims and objectives lack of dynamic and productive leadership leads to the deterioration of the family school institution organization as well as the country so there are many reasons to be a leader here i have given some of the reasons we need leaders to develop organizations with the correct vision and to set goals and direct towards achieving the goals and also we need leaders to plan properly to encourage followers in a proper way and to distribute and utilize resources properly and also to resolve and minimize conflicts we need leaders let's talk about the democratic way of living we can see many conflicts and disagreements prevailing among persons in the contemporary society the reason for this is the competition and mistrust prevalent among them nobody can live alone in the society when we act as a group we should respect others tolerate their ways and act in a fair manner then conflicts and disputes can be minimized respect for the accepted customs and traditions laws rules and regulations and act with equality and coexistence are the features that can be seen in a democratic way of living the specific features of such a society is the concern not only to work for one's own benefit but for the betterment of others also a democratic way of living is to transform democratic features into life habits of a person and act as a good citizen in the society there are some qualities relevant to the democratic way of living such as respecting the views of the others acting cooperatively enjoying rights while performing responsibilities arriving at decisions through discussion respecting equality acting honestly and in a law abiding manner so democratic way of living guarantees the well-being of the society here i have given the summary of this lesson democracy can be identified as a system of government as well as a way of living 
it is important to develop the qualities of democracy as a member of the school society you should follow the democratic features of the school both enjoying the child rights and nurturing the duties are important there are several institutions to protect the child rights various emotions and feelings that occur in one's mind affects one's behavior controlling and managing emotions in a positive way is very important to all as citizens of a democratic society democratic leadership qualities should be identified and practiced democratic way of living guarantees the well-being of the society such as improvement of harmony in the society establishment of a society with minimum conflicts creation of a law abiding society and protection of the rights of all we have come to the end of this lesson here i have given you some of the questions please go through with the book again read it carefully and answer these questions goodbye children have a nice day